Okay, I'm on. I'm on a call with my good friend Damon, who asks me a question. We've just been looking at insanity videos of insurgents. I mean, peaceful protesters getting hit by cars, and other peaceful protesters smashing windows open and having. Did you see the one with the Prius? Did you show me that one, or did I send you that one? Yeah, that's. Uh, I sent you that one. Like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? You saw it on Mike Glover's page. Right. So. I'm actually posting in today's newsletter thoughts on this. Oh, great. I can't wait. Yeah. 6 p.m. 6 p.m., everybody. 6 p.m. Uh, it drops th- every day. Monday, Wednesday, Friday now. We're getting, it was too yeah. much, too much five days a week. It's too much three days a week, but we still have a very high open rate. So, um, but, so I don't know if I want to talk about this. What do you do? I've got lots of thoughts on this. Um, the, the you know because you've trained with me, Damon. Yeah. You you know that I look at violence at the thirty one thousand foot view. This is a thousand feet fi- higher than the thirty thousand foot view. And so, for anyone who's not aware of that reference, business reference, you know, ground level ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand. And so, the higher level is when I look at this stuff. Here's all I think about. I'm like. Why the fuck were you in downtown LA or why were you on that street that that cuz you can like like this isn't Star Trek where the peaceful protesters suddenly just beam down you can see shit happening and then you choose to continue to drive thinking you can get through it right. now listen so I'm going to catch some shit for this but what the fuck I'm, I obviously feel horrible for the terror and fear of anybody in that car. I don't know if I can comment on how bad I feel about some terrorist fucking anarchist with a mask on, with a hammer, with a gun, with a bat, with a crowbar, with a skateboard, smashing a car and then getting hit by the car. But for political purposes, I'm going to say that's regrettable and all lives matter. Oh shit! I shouldn't have said that. Um, am I am I losing followers, Damon? Yet? Um, it's okay. All right. It'll just be you and me in the newsletter. Everyone's like, "Wow, Tony's." You have a hundred percent open rate. Right. And there you go. So listen, I look at this stuff. So I had a meeting with Byron Rogers, who you know from Protector Nation, right? Yeah. Former Marine, badass dude. I had a meeting with him to film some stuff for uh, his his symposium. It was just when all this stuff kicked off. And I said to him, he said, okay, so you can come up. We're going to film in Orange County. We're going to do this here. And I said, uh, I said, dude, I don't know if I'm driving. I said, I'm going to check the fucking news. I'm going to check these riots like you're going to check the weather. And if I see any storm clouds in the area, I'm not fucking going. We better reschedule. So, Meaning I'm looking at it from 31,000 feet. I'm not just saying, hey, Wednesday, I'm driving to Orange County. I, I check things. I, I, and then by checking something that far in advance, you start to activate the reticular activating system in your brain as to what is important to look out for. So when I'm driving, and this is no different than if you're driving and you're texting and you're changing the radio station, and then all of a sudden you see, you know, uh, you know, a, a quarter of a mile ahead, you see a bunch of lights come on. Your RAS, reticular activating system, immediately, unless you're a fucking shitty, shitty driver, and there are those, goes, there must be a cop or an accident there. I just saw a bunch of lights flash, brake lights. And you slow down. And when I see that, my brain automatically starts thinking, if there's suddenly a bottleneck, am I going too fast? Can I get on the soldier, on, on the, on the, uh, um, uh, the shoulder, can I, I forgot what the side of the road was called, on the, on the shoulder, can I, my brain starts to download plan Bs, which means I'm activating the anticipatory cells in my brain, which improves my perception speed, which decreases my reaction time. This is the same fucking process that would, if I was driving down a street, this happened to me years ago, I got lost in downtown LA and I turned on a wrong street and suddenly I was like, holy shit, 
if my car stalls here, this is the last place anyone's ever going to see me. And I accelerated to a, 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 uh, a speed that nobody would stand in front of the car because you can just go, that's moving too far. If I knew if it went too slow, I could get swarmed. And if I went too fast, I could not control myself. I picked up a speed that I can handle the car. And this may or may not be possible. I'm using this not as a strategy. So I'm not telling anybody here, you know, uh, like this is the strategy and the tactic. I'm telling you what I did years ago to show you um, how my brain was moving. I stayed at a speed I can control the car and the entire time I was diffusing my vision, I was looking for threats left, right, and center. And then when I got out of there, I was like, holy shit, wicked adrenaline dump. And then, and then went, okay, don't ever turn down that street again. So when I see these things, Damon, I go, why the fuck are you on, on that road? Like you, there's no way that many people gathered and you didn't hear them or know about it if you were actually like thinking about your personal safety. So that's my only guidance to people. It's the three Ds that we teach in our program, detect, defuse, defend, detect and avoid, defuse and deescalate, and a push comes to shove, defend. A lot of people ask me, what do you do if your car's surrounded? And I'm going, well, what happened to D2? And what happened to D1? Why are we always starting and analyzing self-defense from D3, right? So when you practice, just to make this super clear without talking about riots and peaceful protests, if you always ask me, how do I get out of a headlock? And then I teach you how to get out of a headlock and you do 10,000 reps of that, you always have to do 10,001 reps of letting yourself be put in a headlock. So you're always doing one more rep, training your brain to accept the attack so that you can practice the counter. Now that's a heavy epiphany, big fancy word for light bulb moment, folks. That's a heavy epiphany if you stop and think about that. So my whole thing is like when my kids are going out or we're going out and you know, I, I immediately, I might check in with some cop friends, I might look at the news, I might look at the time, I might look at you know, where people are threatening shit on Twitter because what I'm trying to do is get to the left of the ambush by not even fucking leaving my house these days, right? So I, I, I can tell you that in the last 24 hours, I have saw that video tons of times thinking about myself in my car. If that was me in my little tiny hatchback, like what do I have to defend my life if I have that situation? And then today I'm following American contingency. I see the updates where things are happening. And there's a, there's a BLM shutting down an intersection today at sunset somewhere in Echo Park. And I looked at where I was supposed to have a date tonight with a gal on the east side. It was like four blocks away. And I'm like, you know what? I canceled the date. I told her I had a toothache for my dentist appointment. I lied about it because she wouldn't like me canceling because of that. But that's right. Like, I'm sending her this interview. Yeah, I know, I know. But literally, I said, okay, I might be pulling up before it gets dark. But what if that's me trapped on a street on Sunset Boulevard with a riot like, that I have to get home from? Right. So I, I'm just staying home at night watching Netflix, you know? Right. Um, I'd have invited but, her over, man. <laughs> I don't want her to have to drive through that kind of bit. Well, then but, she has um, to stay at your house. <laughs> but then it's careful we're recording. Careful. I know. I, I only struggle with my dog. But I, um, I dig. I dig it. You're uh, on. The, you're on the couch now, honey. <laughs> but but you, you know what I mean. Um, but there, but then there is the realistic side of you know. At some point, you're, you're going to be in an unfortunate place at the wrong time. And what means do you have to? Hopefully get out alive. You, you need to. So the message from this call here is like, I'm an options facilitator. I don't tell people what they need to do. The reality is, you know, um, the, the, the 31,000 foot view would be the same for Mike Glover would be the same with Jack Carr would be the, why do I need to drive down that road? Do we need to be there? If I absolutely need to be there, how do I blend in? How do I go undetected? If, if I can't, um, if I can't make those changes so I go unnoticed, okay, w w you know, what's the speed I need to travel at? What are the weapons? What are my weapons? What are, the, what are the rules of engagement? And when you start thinking about all that stuff way in advance, then what starts to happen is it changes your D1 kind of like, like, like energy, right? Yeah. Like D1 shouldn't be, D1 detect and avoid folks. D1 shouldn't be an afterthought. Um, shouldn't be an afterthought when you go, oh shit, 
look at this, a stimulus is being introduced too quickly. Oh, I'm caught off guard. It, you, th this should be like you did today or last night, um, or no, today, uh, is uh, you created a scenario in your mind. You and I could get there before. I could go to my date, but what if I get stuck? And you start, you know, like the Get Carter video with, that, we, that we always show yeah. for cycle behavior. You start seeing like different things and then you stop and you go, is it worth it? No, I'm going to postpone. Yeah, you know? Exactly. I could go see her next week. Good. And, you know, it's like I, I train, I take time to train with Kawa this summer, um, who, who you know. Yeah. It's like when you break down the 30,000 foot level, you realize there's a thousand variables to get to that minute of oh shit. Right. Unless you're, unless you're just ambushed, you know, like, which is highly unlikely, but it happens. Um, so the reality is there's lots of things that have to happen before you get to that binary choice that you have to make. Um, right. So if you can just remove yourself from, the situation then yeah. you do it um, i mean i look at all those people man and i go i look at anybody on both sides i'm like what the fuck are you doing there <laughs> exactly and if and if and if the answer is i don't know then get the fuck out of there and if you're part of some militant i gotta be there and i want to get in a fight then guess what fucking shit's gonna happen so I, I always tell people there's no justice, no peace slogan means if there's no peace, then it's something. It's conflict, war, like there's going to be some violent outcome. So you got to be willing to see what you're signing yeah. up for. Right. And, uh, you know, so. Listen, and, and there have been lots of examples, to be fair. And, and, and when I interviewed Jack Carr, you know, uh, you know, in the article he wrote for, for Town Hall on, on uh, uh, you know, that inspired me to get him on, on the No Fear podcast. I, uh, one of the things he referenced was, it was a, a video that I had actually, uh, an audio I had heard of like, like of a mom calling 911 surrounded by these freaks in the middle of the day. Now, like, like she was with her daughter in the car, her daughter was scared shitless. She wasn't, she wasn't like driving around, you know, with a, with a American flag going down with, the, you know, she was just, she just got caught in the wrong place. But I would have the same guidance. So anyone listening to this, you know, you you got to get out of your bubble. And it's, do I need to be on the street? Should I be on a main street? You know, is this shit happening on side streets? When you see, you turn a, you turn a corner and you see a, a bunch of people with masks and black shirts, why are you continuing driving? Pull over, park, get out of your car, move a different way. Or pull over, you know, park, and and blend in or back up and turn around i mean there's a lot of people going tony don't tell people to get out of their car you know that that's the weapon don't there's a time to get out of your fucking car and there's a time to stay in your car it's like we tell people you know depending on proxemics when you're in an active killer situation sometimes the thing to do is engage sometimes the thing to do is play dead sometimes the thing to do is to charge the threat and you want to choose the safest thing for you but in the moment of deciding the safest thing to do, it's not going to be you opening a book and looking at rule number three, section four. It's going to be based on your intuition, your instincts, and your intelligence. And you've got to be like kind of in a flow state at that point, managing your fear. And and you do that best by analyzing stuff way in advance. And so, you know, the contingency plans are being are being run as little movies in your head way before you get in the car and you start driving downtown. I literally had this conversation a few days ago with a friend of mine who lives in West Hollywood and takes the freeway downtown because I'm like the Bray and the 10 or whatever and goes downtown. And he's like, oh, you, you post too much of this stuff. You're paranoid. I said, you have a family to go home to. You go down that way five days a week. You should know three other routes non-freeway north and south of the 10 to get home if you have to. I'm like, just take a half an hour tonight when you're home and memorize them so that if you're over there when this shit goes down and some ruling comes out at 2 p.m. when you're in your office you don't know about, People go crazy. Um, you just have to have contingency plans. And people think it's paranoid, but it's not. It's just being a responsible husband, father, son, human being, you know? Right. Dog dad. I want to come home to W every day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know what the hell's going on in East Hollywood. And tonight I made a choice to stay home. So. Dig it. Good move, man. You know what we call that in the PDR program? Choose safety. <laughs> right? That's always, listen, don't confuse choosing safety for playing it safe. Playing it safe means you're going to have a boring, miserable life and regret it. Um, choosing safety means whatever I'm doing, what is the safest way to execute? What is the safest way to deploy? What is the safest way to move forward? 
Okay, dude, I'm actually going to, uh, I dig this call. I'm going to actually upload it to Libsyn and post it right away. Awesome, man. Let me know what you want to talk about the other stuff later this yeah. weekend or whatever. Oh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the uh, the recording. And actually, I called you to catch up on friendship and business. So, But you asked me that quite. Well, we started talking about <laughs> fucking maniacs and cars, attacking cars, and it turned into this spontaneous thing. So I'm going to stop this recording. And, uh, and I'll tag you in this so people can follow Legacy Mentor as well. Stand by. Awesome, man. Stand by.